Okay, mea culpa again. This is going to be partially audio only because I turned the camera up to the ceiling not realising that the screen was still sharing information. The video was up for about three minutes but it had 18 views. Some troll may have downloaded it. I hope not. I'll get it edited. Um, but in the meantime, it's too important not to share. So I'm going to share partial audio until I get past the accidental doxing part. So share screen. I'll get rid of that. Now here is the video. And I titled it Rape Allegation by X family, friend and employee of Sharon Gale and husband Mark Latter. Um, now, let's see if we can find it. That's a different video that's just uploading. Here it is. Where am I watching it? I'll cut that out. Um, let's find it. Where is it? Oh, God, you're going to have to forgive me. This is why I'm semi-retired. <laughs> And I, uh, primarily, I didn't mean to come back online as um, a journalist. I really meant to come online to document my own history. So let's see, just patience. That's that. That's that. This is that. Oh, OK, here we go. That's Twitter. We were watching it on Twitter. Um, and I have to go audio only. Yeah, I've learned so I'll, Right, lesson, that's what I'll do. Which I should have learned long ago, being online for 12 years or something. Right, so now. Which is to document everything when it comes in. Because, Good, uh, it's on audio know, only. When your tech is going to get confiscated, raided by the police, or things are going to be remotely deleted off a phone, which I've experienced, or uh, your Facebook or YouTube channels are going to be nuked with uh, vital evidence, um, you know, in Messenger or whatever, links, uh, groups, or, um, yeah, so I'm just documenting an email I received from an ex-employee and family friend of Sharon Gale, aka Latter Swiston, um, and Sadly, the evidence bundle she sent me seems to have disappeared. So whether she's deleted it on her end out of panic, I don't know. All I can do is read her initial email to you and promise you that um, I saw with my own two eyes the email thread, the photographs of Sharon's now six-year-old with this person, and the emails from Sharon, including some very damning things she said. I will uh, upload this on BitChute because Sharon has aligned herself with uh, Hoaxted, Trolls and Ricky Dearman uh, and targets people's channels. So this is just an introduction. I'm going to uh, document... Um... Well, actually, this will be on BitChute and I'll do another introduction. So this, but I, I, the lesson I've learned is document everything, because in the past I've had things like a very extensive thread from Wesley Hall, who was on Sky News and so on, having been gifted for a few months a fabulous building in Manchester by Ryan Giggs and somebody else for the homeless. But he discovered a Freemasonic... Uh, room upstairs in the building and was targeted thereafter including being beaten up and uh, fleeing for his safety really uh, and also he before that came to pass or somewhere around there he was commissioned by I presume David Icke and then Jamie Icke to try and recruit me this was back maybe 2016 when I was living in Lanzarote to try and recruit me as a broadcaster for the People's Voice, whatever it was. And um, in amongst that thread, uh, when I said, why did David never cover Hampstead, 
um, Wesley replied on behalf of Jamie. Oh, Jamie said his dad remarked it wouldn't be worth his career to cover Hampstead. So things like that. Lady Emma Stroud, you know, invaluable years of testimony regarding uh, the Saudi royal family and George Bush Sr. and MK Ultra in the military in America and in Texas and so on. So much information lost. So in the future I'll document it and try not to dox people, you know, but like if that's the price of getting this kind of information documented then so be it. And let me see if I can, I can't minimise while I'm broadcasting, so I'll have to go share screen and then without doxing anybody, that's Matt Taylor. I think I'll turn the camera off so that we don't have any accidental doxing because I'm going to read you some fairly explosive emails and I don't want to give away the ladies' uh, contact details at the moment. So this is from an ex-employee and uh, of, of Mark and Gail, uh, Mark and Sharon Latter. Mark Latter, also going by Doug Latter, the man uh, accused of murdering baby Charlotte and then acquitted because of insufficient evidence to uh, assess who exactly did the deed. Um, so here we go. So it says, Hi there, I'm a subscriber of your channel and a fan. And I have held myself back from writing for some time. But I cannot watch people guessing about Sharon. This is Sharon Gale online, but she's actually Sharon Swiston. When I know so much of the truth about this damaging person. I worked for Mark Latta from 2008 until 2009. I am a victim of one of his crimes, and he traumatised me beyond belief. I became friends with Sharon to try and make sense of him. Bad idea. I have not met her last husband. No, I have met her last husband another, a number of times. This is her second marriage to our knowledge, Martin Swiston, but Mark Latter, as far as we know, was her first marriage the father of baby Charlotte. Um, I broke any contact with Sharon as she was too harmful and frankly traumatic for my mental health. I have so much of a horror story to tell you that you could literally not make it up. Her Swiston surname is her last married name. Her last ex-husband is Martin Swiston, a professor engineer living in Bahrain. He is a very powerful man. The videos of Turkey are his house he owns that I think he still lets Sharon holiday in. I have been there to stay myself. She had her daughter mm -hmm, with him and the little girl who when she was two used to call me auntie mm -hmm, was taken into care as the police were called on Sharon after a drunken night and Sharon held a knife to the little girl's throat when the police tried to gain access to the property. I was stalked, drugged and raped in 2010 by Mark Latter. I involved the police. The horror story you see online is just a scratch on the surface. And this lady goes on to say, and I don't, I'm not sure I agree with her because I think Sharon Gale has been recruited by Hoekstead. Uh, the likes of Danny Jones and Grob Knob and, and uh, Ricky Deal, and she speaks up for and so many others. I think she's um, been recruited by the dark side, sadly. So this lady says, I can guarantee you uh, Sharon Gale never tried to set up any foundation. She's got no solicitors involved. She's not working writing tenders, as she claims. She has not spent time in jail overseas, and any travel has been paid for by whichever man she is servicing at the time. This is the quote of this lady that has sent me an email. Uh, the boat 
is not her, it is named after... Oh, the boat is not her, it is named after the, the Lady Sharon girl of the boat, yacht. Although I do think, because Sharon herself says that Gale is not her birth father's name. And I have heard the narrative that um, Sharon's mother married a very wealthy, influential man who could well have been Sir Roger Gale's brother. But that marriage didn't last, and then Sharon's mother and her ended up penniless, really. Uh, but so that so so Gail is not her birth name if she was ever named after her birth father, but Gail is the name her mother used and Sharon used and her one of her sons at least uses, um, and then it became Latter and then it became Swiston. So yeah, the first name is a mystery by Sharon's own admission. She says Gail is not her birth father's surname. So anyway, this lady says the yacht's not named after her. Um, Mark Latter lives in Newlin Way, Port Solent. Gail is her maiden name. Well, not by Sharon's admission, except for that is the mother's name. Sharon may be born out of wedlock. And then she says her family hate her. She is a pathological liar. The only reason she talks into her laptop on her channel is because she is incapable of maintaining any relationships or friendships and no one else in real life will have anything to do with her. Her 18 year old is, mm, I'm not going to say that name, who she had with Mark. Oh, okay, so he's, okay, so he's the father of Mark and Charlotte, maybe not Sam. Oh, anyway, Sam's adult, also known as Doug Latter. He, this 18-year-old now, was removed from her care when he was seven. This lady says, I was interviewed by social services as I was involved in his care for a few months and had to do a crime check, back, uh, background check. He would be 18 now. I hope that clears some of it up. My number is, mm -hmm. I'm happy if you phone for you to record the call as there is so much to it. Please just keep my details private and exclusive to you only. Many thanks. So I haven't passed on phone details, email details. Um, and I did receive extensive email evidence from this lady dating back to 2016 between herself and Sharon, including Sharon saying uh, this lady deserved to have been raped by her ex. Mark Latter, aka Doug Latter. So that's for the record. I, I'll possibly put this on um, bit shoot instead of YouTube, although I don't think I'm breaking any laws by putting it on YouTube. And what I've learned, as I say, is that, um, it, you know, if I hold back on documenting in information that comes into me, it can get lost forever. And that's not ideal by any means. So that's it, Angie, Angie Power of Disney signing out, just documenting on this lady that seems to have made it her business um, to go after people like me and try and discredit. You know, okay, so now we've skipped the email and for the 18 people that viewed the video before I realized, despite turning the camera up, I had in fact doxed this lady. I am uh, so sorry, and um, I pray it was not downloaded maliciously. I do believe baby Charlotte died a horrendous death. Um, so I don't believe it's a fake backstory. But given that, according to documents, death certificates, mainstream media reports, and her own words, given that, Baby Charlotte died at 10 weeks old with 32 fractures and a dislodged brain and a something behind the eye, aneurysm or something. Given that the another daughter was taken at three years, allegedly having had a knife held to her neck by Sharon. Um, and given that the 18 year old was removed from her care at age seven given that the 22-year-old voluntarily or, or maybe by direction of the social services went to uh, 
live with his father until he was 18. So basically this woman has not raised any of her own children. It seems very bizarre that she would be selected to discredit other children's allegations of abuse. I'm going to just, actually, I just remembered I got another email from someone telling me to check. Yeah, I'm sorry it took me so long to get to this. This part of the Sean Atwood interview is crucial. The Sean Atwood YouTube interview. Okay. Let's go back. Sorry, I need to go back here. Here. And then continue. Um, at 1 hour 47 or something where Sharon allegedly says that um, although her ex-husband Mark Latter aka Doug Latter was not convicted in a criminal court um, he was within the family courts yeah, so let's try and see if we can find this at 1 hour 47. Um, let's just tune in a minute. Uh, okay, 1 hour 44, let's try about there. I couldn't help it. I didn't completely lose it, but I did have to ask for five minutes to walk out and come back in again. Like, because I didn't want to stand there sobbing like an idiot. Because you've got the court cool sketchy man there. <laughs> I'm very conscious, I don't want the press having that of me. Like, I I am like the head of my family, as it stands at this minute. And I, and I only want... But where were your family? All gone, as far as I understand. Everything is strong, not someone breaking down, but they did see that. Now, if the, if the judge hadn't, of, like, he sent everyone home randomly on a Friday, like halfway through the day, he hadn't finished. And then he just said, um, hmm. This reminds me of the Callie Diamond Sean Atwood interview where body language experts could read um, more intimacy than the surface would indicate. Um, and according to disclosures by Sharon to Barbara O'Hare, she was already intimate with Sean by the time this interview took place. I'm adjourning this, like, now, for till Monday. And I thought, well, probably just wants to buck off, it's Friday, isn't it? It's getting a bit much for everyone. Um, and then when we came back on the, on the, I wasn't even at the court when it happened, um, this is another beautiful thing of, of the police. I, I was driving, um, I, what was I driving? I was driving my son to school, I think. And I just had like phone call from the police, like, oh, just to let you know, um, judges come in this morning, no case to answer. And I didn't even know what that meant. And I went, what? What I, does that mean? I wonder what that scratching is. I've only, I'm not saying for sure, but I know, uh, I've seen that often, it, again, body language. I've seen that often with people that have addictions, drug addictions, where there's this scratching thing going on. Maybe it's a nervous tick, I don't know. Um, I just, I, well, I went up the curb. Like, I only, like, hit a lamppost, I was like, what? And I'm like, well, shut up, shut up a minute. Like, I need to stop the car here, because I'm, like, shaking, and I can feel my knees are going, because I'm like, what does this mean? And he said, oh, well, no case to answer. And I was like, so you've wrecked my life for four years, for fuck all. And he was like, well, not really, because he's still guilty. It doesn't mean he's not guilty. I said, well, what does that actually mean then? Oh, well, the judge didn't think there was enough evidence to put it to the trial. I went, what, like, there wasn't any evidence because he didn't do it, and that's why it's not going to the jury. Like, like but if it had gone to that jury, they were really, they looked, they looked terrible. They looked worse than me. They looked worse than me. Because these old techniques, they've got the emotional they, reaction. It was awful. Who are you going to believe? Authority? Jorah's are going to believe us, I would yeah, the doctors and the police, and look at that barrister. I mean, you know, Jeremy Gibbons there is a portion. You've got all these, and, and then we've got, I mean, for his, his defence medical experts, what they were saying were right, but they probably look like the little scruff bags that have come in. His defence experts, right, OK. Yes, they were picking the holes in. Of course, it's theatre. Like, Whoever puts on the best show, yeah. you've got your best actors. The state always has the most money to put on the best show and pay the highest 
normally for the actors. Well, this is the disgusting thing wow. about it, on top of all the other disgusting things about it, is um, they estimated that that trial come to over £5 million. Pounds. What a waste of taxpayers' money. And all those people who went against you guys, they're the ones who should be in prison as far as I'm concerned. So you're saying that with this nothing to answer, he, he doesn't have to go to prison, but he, he still has a guilty? On no, not guilty. Oh, not guilty. I'm not guilty. not guilty. Okay. But that wasn't good enough for social services, obviously. So this is not the end of your story. You've not won at this point we, against the We haven't won state. anything. No, we haven't won anything. What happens next? Um, well, all the time this is going on, social services are crawling all over me. Now, this it wasn't small fry because they were actually putting more stress on me than the police and everything else was than the company, that the social services, because they're threatening you with your child that's there. You've lost one, and you know it. Like I made a huge mistake when they, when the police first said that they were going to make me a prosecution witness. Um, there was this cop around my house, and I'd not seen him before, and I never saw him again after. And he now Sharon says she made a huge mistake. This was one of two occasions when she was charged and convicted of, I think, assaulting a police officer. So although she re recalls this as, I just told him, do your worst, uh, apparently she was drunk and she was successfully prosecuted for assaulting a police officer. He said to me, he said, um, do you actually know how terrible social services are? And I said to him, get out of my house. I went, don't threaten me, don't threaten me in my house. I said, this is early days, isn't it? We're two days in. I went, I've done nothing wrong. So you do, I said, go on, you go and do your bloody worst because I've done nothing wrong. You'll find nothing here. What an idiot. Zip, shit, and said that because they, ta-da, social services are there. And they've never gone. They've never gone. They're still here now. You know, there's still a presence of purgatory. Um, so once this trial was finished, um, what did we have? I think we had a whole, was it two weeks before then we started and caught that? I'll just stop that comment for a moment here. I hope Sean Atwood realises this is Fair Use 107 um, in the in the interest. This is a public figure. Sean's a public figure. And I'm simply referencing what somebody drew to my attention. I had watched this interview before, um, and it probably warrants another watch, although Sharon doesn't like it. But um, so far, she said the court case cost over five million. Her ex-husband was not found not guilty, just insufficient evidence to to uh, convict. And then she goes on to talk about the family courts um, taking a different viewpoint. Dates in the family court trial. Mm -hmm. Now, in the family court, the burden of proof, well, it's like you're guilty. <laughs> like they say it's 60 40. It isn't 60 40, it's like 80 20, like at the best. Not many people win in the family court. It's a really huge business. It's as stinking as the pharmaceutical industry. Um, so how long does that take? That takes another year and a half to get to the family court trial, which runs... How long did that take? That was about two weeks. And is the family court trial against him again? No, it's both of us. Both of you now. No, no, they're really playing us off against each other and he's falling for it. He's falling for it because another year has passed. That's interesting, isn't it? The family courts were holding both parents liable. Asked people been in his ear, people have been in my ear. Like, oh, she had an affair with this one and that one, and that wasn't the case at all. Jesus, like, like, it wasn't. It wasn't the case. I'd got too close to James Park. I was guilty of that. I kissed him, but I hadn't done anything. Under who James Park is? Is that one of the footballers she references? Else. and that was because I was bloody drunk, crying, feeling sorry for okay, drunk, right. myself, and he was like, come on, in my house on the sofa, and I like, but this was like three years ago. Oh, in. in your house on the sofa? Okay. To this purgatory. But it wasn't like, oh, I'm running off from over the town, I was hiding in my house. I'm surprised you <laughs> held yourself together so well in the circumstances. A normal person would have gone insane. Going now I have taken first-hand testimony from Barbara O'Hare, and I think it's recorded um, where Sharon rang her 
uh, within minutes of the Cali Diamond interview with Wheezy on what is truth, where Cali said that Sharon had participated in sex parties organised by Sean E.E. E. Uh, 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 Entertainment Emporium. Anyway, some name, but Sharon fully admitted to Barbara O'Hare that she had attended those parties but said that she'd been duped, she didn't expect to walk in and see an orgy and people with strap-ons, etc. I don't know, people say that to me and I don't think there's anything special with me at all. I think, I think until you have your family threatened in such a way that you don't realise how strong you are at all. If anyone would have said that, like, this is going to happen and you, this is, you, you're just going to survive it, I would have said, no, wouldn't I would not kill myself. So what happened in family court? What were you actually charged with this time? Uh, we're both charged with killing her in that one. Yep. Do you hear that? Both Sharon and Mark, aka Doug, were charged in family court with the murder of baby Charlotte. Killing. Killing me and him, yeah. Which made them look bloody ridiculous because I'd been there with my, like, my son and that. Like, oh, well, the murder trial's going on, and then all of a sudden, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm a child killer. So the media are all over it again? No, they, they can't. can't. No, reporting can't restrictions. It. Yeah, the reporting restrictions. In See, isn't that clever with family courts? It takes it into the private, and it's supposed to be for the protection of the children. Baby Charlotte was already dead. In the family court. So this is great. What they do is they troll all the medical experts that have earned um, tens of thousands of pounds in the, in the criminal trial. The same old motley crew are in again, and of course they win. They win. Didn't, win. didn't win wow. me. Wow. Um, he got a civil murder finding. Wow. Did you hear that? Thank you to the person that sent me this reference. There was a civil finding of murder against Doug, A.K. I mean Mark, A.K.A. Doug Latter, in the family courts. He was also reported to the police for raping, stalking, drugging and raping an ex-employee. When that ex-employee reached out to Sharon years later to try and heal, continue healing from that rape, Sharon told her she deserved to have been raped by her ex-husband. And I saw that evidence with my own eyes. Being against him. Which means what? You just go to prison for that? No. Just well, means No prison, just a finding of murder in the secret family courts with no prison sentence. Researchers have told me to look more closely at Mark Latter, Sharon's first ex-husband. Um, his father was very senior in the Royal Air Force, I believe, and that definitely warrants a, a deep dive. Especially if the secret family courts found him guilty of murder of the baby, they acquitted or had insufficient evidence to, to, to find Sharon guilty, although they, they certainly alleged her guilt, um, and he got no jail time. This is stunning. That he's guilty and that if he ever had a baby with someone else, social services could come take well could come up and say, Oh, you're you're a baby killer, let go, we don't even need a court trial. Are like, you guys at this point of the story, are you guys still together? No. Okay, I see. No, it's it's just got to a state um we wasn't not together, we weren't together through the family court thing. But he done some like when he came out of the prison. Obviously, I've never been in prison, particularly on a nonsense wing. Like, well, that's strange because in other testimonies, Sharon said she was in get uh, she was arrested in Bahrain, I think in Turkey. Uh, maybe they were just drunk, disorderly arrests. But she said they were alleged espionage arrests. But this person that's contacted me that used to work for them and was. Uh, you know, uh, background checked to help with childcare, amongst other duties. Um, she says that, that Sharon fantasises a bit about being an engineer and then having massive contracts and spying around the world. She says it's not the case. She actually said that Sharon had difficulty in holding down a job more than six months, so we'll see how this new position uh, pans out. I, I... 
the person who went in was definitely not the same person that came out. And unfortunately, the person that he knew wasn't the person that I was any... Okay. So thank you very much to the person that sent me the reference. One, it's around one hour 46 onwards. And that's shocking information that the secret family courts found that Mark Latter was guilty of the murder of baby Charlotte. And, um, wow. Okay, guys, uh, I'll leave it there for now. I might get brave enough to just publish this on YouTube. I know that Sharon is uh, recruited to try and do round two of flying to Ireland like Ricky Dearman did and trying to allege malicious communications against me. But working with Baron David Ward, um, you know, I'm pretty confident that acts and statutes do not stand without the consent of the governed. And uh, anybody, a blind man on a galloping horse, can see that I'm not being malicious. Uh, I'm reporting testimonies, affidavits and facts in the public arena. Thanks, uh, and please contact me if you have any further information. And to the lady that sent me the evidence thread, I can try and get it recovered off my phone if you've deleted it at your end, but I don't want to put you in a situation of danger. Um, you know, you said you'd be happy to speak to me and have it recorded. Please do get in touch. God bless. Okay, so that's a rescued version of the, um, I should probably put things on listed while I review them, but, you know, it, the doxing thing is a side issue. Let's get down to the real truth. Um, th that video is shocking. Shocking. And anybody who takes Sharon Gale's, um, sober assertions as valid and i'm talking to you jerry at the moment and others give your head a wobble god bless check out the other video i i for uh, i'm just uploading a video of um a, an example of sharon's online abuse